Mobile survival games are taking over the market with big and small game companies on equal ground. So in this video, I'm going to list the top 10 survival games for Android and iOS. Some of these games will not be a surprise to you, but then there are a few that so far have stayed a secret. The first game on the list is Ark Survival Evolved. This will probably not be a big surprise to many of you because this game is absolutely amazing. It does a great job of capturing the feel of being alone on an island full of dinosaurs, has a great crafting tree and base building mechanics, allows you to tame and ride those dinosaurs, and even has amazing clan mechanics with epic PvP. The only downside of this game is their monetization strategy, which would normally disqualify a game from being first on this list, but mobile survival games have worse monetization systems than most other genres, which has forced me to lower my standards on this video. The second game on the list is Frostborn. This will probably be a surprise to many of you because most people have not heard of Frostborn outside of this channel. It is made by Kafir, who also created The Last Day on Earth, and they kept their addictive crafting progression using workbenches, but it actually has multiplayer integrated throughout the game. Furthermore, many of the weapons in the game have unique and dynamic abilities, making each fight a little different. Leveling up your character and classes allow you to specialize, which often results in really dynamic and strategic team PvP as you defend your base or fight with people in PvP zones. And it seems like the devs are listening to their players, which is always a huge bonus for any game. That being said, for those of you who do not like multiplayer in your survival games, then I recommend playing Dawn of Zombies if you like a good storyline, Last Day on Earth if you want to try a classic, or Siberica, which is Kafir's newest game. All of these games use the same addictive crafting progression and top-down view that we love so much. The third game is Life After. This game is made by Netties and is fantastically done. I got really into this game long enough to get a top video for the game, and the entire time I played it, I was in amazement with how well they balance team and solo play. If you join an active camp, there will be tons of fun things to do, and the camaraderie that you will build with your teammates is unprecedented. I still have people messaging me almost two years later saying how much fun they had when we used to play Life After together, and I couldn't agree more. I love defending our base each week, fighting the camp boss each week, and competing for the championship at Charlestown each month. Honestly, it is one of the best games I've ever played, but the grind was so overwhelming. Even with amazing friends that would try to help me do my daily quests, the game just simply took too much of my time. So if you have not played Life After, or if you don't care about being a top player, this should be one of the games you play next. The fourth game is Day R Survival. I was originally turned off by this game because of the graphics and gameplay. It is a slow game where both fighting and survival includes mostly managing numbers. But as I have learned more about this game, those numbers are what makes this game great. The stats of this game are complex, making the strategies on manipulating those stats innumerous. Furthermore, the game has a huge world with a vast amount of options for equipment. So if you have a love for strategy and a strong imagination to make up for the lack of visual feedback, this is the perfect game for you. The next game on the list is Out There Omega Edition, which is another game that has a lot of text and not a lot of visual feedback. But similar to Day or Survival, this game is fun because the strategies behind manipulating stats is immensely satisfying. At least it is for me. I'm a big nerd and I love this kind of stuff, so if you like that and you like space-themed games, this is a game you should try. The sixth game is Crashlands. This game made on the list solely because the creators are hilarious. To give you a glimpse of this, here is a section of their trailer. Defeat local wildlife to acquire their parts for your crafting, and then turn their own parts against them. Sew their skin into armor, grind their bones into weaponry, and turn their babies against their former brethren. Fight, Wobbit! Fight for your new mother's enjoyment! <laughs> and that is just a glimpse. If you want to watch the whole trailer, here is a link. The seventh game is Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. This game is kind of a halfway point between something like LDOE and Day Our Survival. It has a lot more visual feedback than Day Our Survival, but obviously has a lot less than one of Kafir's games. And then on the other hand, it is a lot more numbers and strategy based than Kafir games, but not quite to the level of Day Our Survival. After that, we have Last Island Survival. This game is essentially Rust on the mobile phone, and it is amazing. I played a lot of this game when it first came out, and I had an app 
absolute blast getting together with my friends, building a giant base, fighting over airdrops, and killing all of the different bosses on the map. Since quitting, I've heard from the community that the game has gone downhill a little bit in the opinion of the top players, but if you are up for a challenge and you don't mind not being the best player in the game, or if you're just looking for a rust on the mobile phone, this is the game for you. The ninth game is Radiation City. This game is a great survival game with an amazing story. The story starts out with a journalist team tasked with studying the Chernobyl power plant accident going missing. The leader of that team was your significant other, so you set out to save her, but a plane crash leaves you just trying to survive. The game is easily over 25 hours of gameplay and it is extremely well done for the mobile phone. And the last game on this list is Escapist 2 Pocket Breakout. This game is a little more of a casual game than I normally choose for one of my lists, but it is cleverly built and offers a few things that the other survival games on this list do not. The main one is that survival in this game is not imminent, but rather self-inflicted. You can of course stay in prison and not have to worry about survival while you're following all the rules. But if you ever want to get out of prison and get to the beach, then you need to devise an escape plan and once you start that plan, do everything you need to do to survive. So those are the top 10 survival games of 2021. In addition to these 10, I have five more for you that I really want to mention. But first, three weeks ago, I interviewed the former international president of Activision and everyone that is watching that video is amazed because it's an amazing interview, but very few people are clicking on it to watch it. I'm not sure why. I don't know if you guys think it was clickbait or something, but it's not clickbait. It actually happened and it was amazing. So here's the link and I could not recommend it more. Okay, so back to the five extra games I needed to mention. You will be hard pressed to find a top 10 survival game list that does not include this war of mine. The game is about a civilian father trying to protect his daughter in the middle of a war. It is critically acclaimed for its music, creativity, and heart-wrenching story, which is why it did not make it to my top 10 list. I play games to have fun. I have a serious job where I get to help a lot of people that are hurting and my heart breaks for them as I help them in real life. So I'm not really interested in also doing that in a game. But if you are this is the game for you. Another game that its players love, but I just can't get behind it is Don't Star. I do not like this style of art and I simply cannot get myself to play this game, but the players of this game love it. In fact, it is one of, if not the highest rated survival game on Android and iOS. Then there is Minecraft, which is of course a great game, but also everyone already knows about it, so I didn't really want to put it on the list. That being said, if you didn't know that Minecraft was available on the phone, well, now you know. Another game I had to mention is Alien Blackout. This game is made by the creators of the movies, and it almost made it to the top 10 list because it is so different and unique compared to other survival games, but it ultimately got eked out because there are so many other great games to choose from. Another game that got eked out was Fallout Shelter. This is also a great game that my wife and I enjoyed playing for a while, but there was just too much great competition, so it got pushed out of the top 10. Well, that's it guys, hope that helps. If you like this video or how I think about games, make sure to check out my playlist on the top 10 10 mobile games. I cover a lot of other genres that you might be interested in. Alright guys, I'll see you next time.